Hello everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today, I'm gonna do a market analysis, like market conditions, uh, look at some, like the 10 year, the dollar, look at some ratios, and what ratios tell us is an asset priced against an asset. Uh, it takes away the dollar. It takes away all the uh, manipulation in the dollar, interest rates, all that junk, it, it gets taken away. And what you can do with using ratios is you can quickly identify value over time. So if someone says uh, oil's $50 a barrel and they give you a date, like this was in 1975, is that an expensive price? Well, you would probably say yes, but relative to what? Like, what is it relative to? And if you said a car was $3,000 in the 1970s, a brand new car, and you'd say, well, is that expensive or cheap? And you'd say, well, I'd have to do an analysis. I'd have to look at what cars cost, and then have to look to see what a house costs. Then I have to look to see what oil costs, and and food, and and chicken, or whatever else you're going to check it against. And if you have a ratio, it basically uh, tells you the relative value right off the bat. So I can tell you that oil's cheap. Anything above thirty is ridiculous cheap in a gold to oil ratio. It means one barrel can buy more than thirty barrels of oil. One ounce. To 30 barrels. And it, it basically flatlines everything. What you're going to notice over time is that you're going to see uh, these ratios fluctuate against each other. What does that fluctuation? The fluctuation, from what I can tell, is it's, it's demand for those assets, is the changing of the ratio. The entire thing can get priced up or down depending on how gold is being priced against the monetary base. So in an inflationary period, what happens is you get a repricing of gold against the monetary base. That raises the entire commodity complex up. That's what's doing. It's ri rising the entire ratio higher. And what happens is that you'll see oil, uranium, you'll see uh, silver usually, they'll reprice themselves against gold. So gold's a moving target higher as it's accounting for the monetary base. And then the other asset is outpacing it going faster as it goes up. And we want to be in those assets that are getting repriced against gold and compressing its ratio against it. Uh, that provides us greater leverage to the move, and it provides us greater, greater purchasing power against other assets, which I think will be going down. Now, in market conditions, the reason these are important and the ratio analysis is we want to see what they're doing. We want to see that the market conditions are good. We want to see that the ratios are changing in a favorable way for us. <clears throat> and that's and that's what we're going to look at here today, is are the ratios changing favorably? Are they bad? Uh, what are they doing? They are our guide, so to speak, uh, in the markets. We it, it gives us a vision of what potentially is going on and what could happen. So uh, I'll jump in here. I'm starting with the 10-year. The 10-year uh, was in an uptrend here. I broke this uptrend right, or yeah, the uptrend line right here. I didn't draw it in. Here, you know what? I'll draw in the, the uptrend line because I put the downtrend line in. But the uptrend line looks something like that. So we, we broke this uptrend line. It says, yep, we're in a downtrend. We came on down. We got this double kind of bottom here with the ni nice wicks at the bottom. Usually that means we're going to, you know, bounce and then bounce again, these hammer patterns. We're bouncing higher and we're coming up to the downtrend line. Are we going to break through it or are we going to hit our head like it's kind of showing and head back and stay in this downtrend where we just cycle back and forth? I'm not exactly sure. We'll see what happens. Uh, but usually in an inflationary environment, if the bondholders are in agreement with the inflation thesis, that would mean that the 10-year yield would go higher. It means that this chart in yields would go up. And it's a signal by the bond market, which is considered to be smart money, uh, that inflation is in fact a problem. Now, if this thing beelines lower, it means people are running into bonds and yields are dropping. Yields are the interest rate that that pays on a bond. When interest rates go down, it means people are buying bonds, and that interest rates going down are trying to disincentivize people to buy bonds. 
So the supply and demand of bonds can be seen through yields. A lowering yield means that people are buying more bonds. An increasing yield means that people are selling bonds. So people are in the very short term selling bonds, but we could very well hit this trend line where they start to psychologically buy them again. And if it's declining and it's declining rapidly, that's when a potential crash could happen because someone thinks or a group of people think uh, that something's wrong and that they should be seeking safety and running to bonds and buying as many as they can. That's what we saw in the COVID crash. That's what we saw in 08, uh, all these crashes. Now, the dollar, if the government, or I should say, if the Federal Reserve is in there buying bonds, if they're using quantitative easing to buy the 10-year, which I don't know if they are or aren't, it would be called yield curve control. If they're in there buying this and trying to hold this down, what that's going to do is if inflation is still in the markets, we, we should see the dollar come under pressure, and it hasn't come under pressure right here. I mean, we're right there at the trend line, but if we see this dip down, we are in a downtrend. We have not turned up. If this continues to be in a downtrend and heads lower still, and we're just in a consolidation phase, then that means that uh, yields could be going lower, but they're still printing a bunch of money and that the, the pressure is building in dollars, in the dollar, the value of the dollar. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this dollar is relative to a basket of other currencies. Uh, it's basically a ratio or an index. And you could have other currencies following, uh, falling faster than the dollar. The dollar going up is going to be good for the stock market to some extent. Um, if it's relative value to other currencies, it, you, I, I would say the best spot for stocks would be some inflation, but our inflation is less than other inflation, which means the dollar remains relatively neutral. And it's okay if it moves down slightly, but if the dollar really starts to move downward and people perceive that as an inflationary problem, they're going to rotate money and seek assets that protect themselves against inflation. Uh, so it likes that middle ground. It likes some inflation, but not a lot. And it likes a dollar that's somewhat strong because the stock market is a dollar denominated asset. And what I'm looking for is a weaker dollar. Now, if this thing breaks higher, and it very well could, uh, that means we have probably a problem in the short term, especially if the 10-year yields go down, the dollar goes up, and our commodities go down. There could be a short-term problem. I don't know what the problem would be, uh, but we can see that people in the system think that there's a problem. Now, copper is going up. And if we break 460, I think we're in pretty good shape because we've got a lower high here, but we also have lower lows coming up. So we, we have, we've got the low, higher low, higher high, low, higher low, higher high. We came back, we still have a higher, high, a higher low, and we're coming back up. So this uptrend's still in progress. We broke a, uh, a trend line here. I'll just throw it in right there. There's the trend line. We're doing a back test where it's, it came up, back tested, and We'll see if this thing heads on higher and tries to break this 460 mark. Uh, I'm not too worried because copper's sitting pretty good. And when copper's sitting good, uh, I, I don't really fear the dollar and where it's at. If copper was dropping and the dollar was dropping at the same time, then I would start getting a little fearful. Um, but right now, I'm not. it's not too bad. Copper, Dr. Copper hasn't told us anything, uh, negative at least. Now, here's the gold to oil ratio. Uh, when this ratio is increasing, it usually means that you have problems, uh, especially if it's ramping up like this. Like 2008, this is when we had that sell-off. And oil is one of the best inflation hedges. Uh, in deflation, it does pretty bad. And what happens is, is gold will outperform oil in kind of a deflationary scare. Uh, now, obviously, there's some ones that still went up here. And it looks like the 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 size of these are getting smaller small that's big smaller smaller and you can kind of see the trend line that comes across so actually I'll, I'll put that in here right now since i just saw that 
and I didn't really see that earlier, but uh, it looks like there's a there's a trend line right through here, and that looks pretty strong. I mean, obviously it, we popped out a couple times, and COVID really screwed this thing up. Uh, but to me, what it looks like we we have going on here is a tightening up of the ratio. Uh, I'm looking for a break to the downside. Now, if we don't get that break and it breaks to the upside, uh, we might have some blowout crash. We very well could. So let's continue to monitor this. Uh, I've got this nice um, chart here that we can watch. And if I'm looking at the ratio, we're, we're coming to a point where this thing's either going to break down or up. And up means deflation, down means inflation. With the, with the real estate market where it's at, going into an expansionary phase, uh, I posit that it's an inflationary signal. Now, here's the gold to copper ratio. Uh, we've been tracking sideways for a while, and we've got kind of a, 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 a support resistance line here. It's going to be a resistance line right now since we're below it. And with this ratio going down, it means that copper is outperforming gold. But it looks like even right here. We'll, we'll see what happens here. Uh, but we might come up just a little bit. Maybe gold perform, uh, performs for a little while, and then we'll see which way this thing breaks. 380 and below uh, is, is, is good for copper, and obviously uh, gold is underperforming. Uh, a cheap ratio for the gold to copper ratio is more like 200, so this could get cut in half. Now, silver, uh, the gold to silver ratio is actually going in an in an unfavorable way. Uh, I don't know if this is from manipulation. Uh, I don't know if there's a problem coming, which there very well could be. But it is throwing a signal that people are preferring gold over silver. I would say that that is not favorable uh, for commodities. So, uh, but again, this this thing can can cycle up and down as well. It's not going to be perfect. You're going to have consolidation periods. Uh, and sometimes the signals fluctuate and they throw false signals. So what we want to look at is we want to look at the entire mix. Uh, the entire mix will tell us what's going on. And this could just be a normal pullback. And I know everyone's probably looking at this 50-day, about to cross the 200-day. Uh, but I usually take time. I'm slow. And knowing where we are in the real estate cycle, I, I just can't believe, uh, unless something happens in the short term uh, with real estate, then I can easily believe these numbers. And it very well could. Now, here is the CRB index. I, I'm comparing it to another pattern. I'm trying to gauge where we are in this pattern. Uh, my best guess, and again, guys, this is, this is just me doing this for fun. I wouldn't use this as financial advice or education. Any of these videos that I'm showing you, please don't use it as financial uh, education, or please don't use it for financial advice. Use it for financial education. I don't want you guys to uh, trade off of this. I'm not claiming to be an expert in recognizing these patterns. I'm just showing you what I'm seeing, and maybe it's valid, maybe it isn't. Uh, but when I looked at a lot of the other charts, uh, this guy blew out to the downside. It could be, you know, this move here. I know that the valuations of commodities to stocks, that ratio is far out of balance, which means that commodities are dirt cheap. And I know when you have that signal that what kicks this on and rotates money into commodities is the real estate cycle in an expansionary phase. And we are entering that expansionary phase. So, I'm guessing that this is the end, getting closer to the end of a consolidation period, that we are moving higher. We broke a downtrend that came through here, and that this potential arrow could be somewhere in this area where we're coming on up, and that we could be uh, coming up somewhere in this area here and about to explode higher. Uh, and that's what I'm seeing. So we could see a big move higher in commodities coming very soon. And that's what I'm expecting. So the commodities are throwing the good signals. Uh, I don't see anything that is to worry yet if there's going to be a crash or whatnot. Now, the Dow to gold ratio, this thing was falling all the way back 2009. It fell all the way in 2011, uh, got to a low of about six. In the real estate cycle, 
This was an expansion phase of real estate as it, the Dow lost purchasing power to gold as interest rates were, were going up very slowly. So this was the last commodity bull market. We are expecting a Dow to gold ratio that declines. During this phase from uh, about 2018 uh, to, to 2009-10, this phase in here was a recovery phase of real estate. And in the recovery phase of real estate, people prefer to buy stocks, not, not gold or commodities. And it's a low inflationary, low interest rate environment. And this is where stocks really start to outperform. In about 2018, interest rates were going up at that time very slowly and people started to prefer uh gold precious metals and other things commodities uh in that 2016 to, to 2017 2018 time period and it was reversing the ratio reversed and we were coming on down and we're coming back up here uh could this be a double top uh because what i'm what i'm expecting here is the doubt of fall against gold uh, that's what I think is going to happen, but I don't know if people are believing the inflation that we have is sustainable, and it might not be, and we have to continue to monitor these uh, ratios. So I'm, I'm still looking at this. Uh, I am still expecting a move lower at some point, and it could go quite low depending on inflation and how much money rotates into the precious metals arena. Now here's the NASDAQ composite. <clears throat> this is called an ascending wedge. Uh, I, again, calling tops is very difficult. I don't know if I'm necessarily calling the top here, uh, but we do have an ascending wedge. We've got the trend line here and we've got another line coming here. Uh, it very well could break to the upside or the downside. A top or a topping pattern would look exactly like this. It's a very large pattern, and there's even a larger one if you back out, where this could, if it breaks down, I think we could be putting in a top. If it breaks to the upside, perhaps we go a lot higher. So that's one spot to look at uh, is the NASDAQ composite. I don't know which way this thing's going to break. Uh, you've got signals signaling that it could go either way. And if if they're in there dumping money into the stock market uh, and they're trying to prop this stuff up with low interest rates, perhaps they are going to be successful doing it. They very, well, they very well could. Now, here's some home builders. If we're going into an expansionary phase of real estate, um, we should see home builders with continued strength. We had a massive move from $6 in March all the way to $140. Now, you would expect if the housing market was going to be weak that this would sell off massively. What I am seeing is the exact opposite. I do see some weakness in here, and then I see right here a step change. Now we have strength. Big up days, small down days, bullish engulfing, bullish engulfing. This thing looks like it wants to go higher. Uh, so that one looks really good for a move higher, not lower. Continued strength in the home builders is giving me confidence that an expansion phase is coming. If an expansion phase is coming, then it gives me confidence that inflation is going to come. And if inflation is going to come, all of our commodities will work because they are inflation hedges. Now, here's KB Homes. We've got a descending wedge pattern here. Uh, this is the exact opposite. It, a descending wedge usually breaks to the upside, which it did, and we're seeing strength. These are some of the home builders I own in one of my portfolios. This is the exact opposite. This is an ascending wedge on the NASDAQ, which usually breaks to the downside to show you a ascending versus a descending wedge. Here's LGI homes. We do have a lot of these big kind of sell-off days. Could this go lower? It very well could, but we do have what looks like a lot of support in the 150-ish area. Is every time it comes down here, it gets bought back up, gets bought back up. We have contraction in the candlesticks with a couple of bearish engulfings though so we'll see where this one goes uh M mdc holdings is another uh housing company uh it's another one i own D descending wedge broke to the upside and now we're moving to the upside here so that one looks really good as well uh to move higher so 
we got these signals. The NASDAQ looks like it looks like it wants to go lower. Usually that means that's an expectation of potentially higher interest rates. Uh, we have inflation. And usually what higher interest rates does is it contracts the PE ratios of stocks. And when I say stocks, I don't mean commodity stocks. I'm talking about technology companies that are growth companies. I'm talking about some of the S&P 500, which are growth companies. Growth companies rely on future earnings in their pricing. They have higher PE ratios. Uh, the growth that's in the future is less valuable when interest rates go higher. And that's why the PE ratios contract. When PE ratios contract, people sell those stocks. They sell bonds as well because you have a real negative rate. It means you're losing money. So bondholders don't want to lose money. They sell. And when they sell, uh, that money goes somewhere. That money usually, if it's an inflationary environment, goes into precious metals, commodities, and inflation hedges, and real estate even. And when real estate's the driver of all this, it goes up in price, it turns on the new housing starts, we get inflation because new loans are against new homes, that inflation comes into the system, and it, that's what causes the trigger point of the rotation of money. Now, we're looking at some of these ratios. Uh, silver is underperforming gold at the, at the moment. Uh, and usually that's not good for, uh, we'll call it a commodity boom. Usually silver outperforms. But all the other signals are good. So we've got this one, one-off signal uh, where silver is underperforming gold. And I don't know if I believe it because I see the home builders are strong. I see housing starts are, are, are strong. I see the dollar that hasn't broken to the upside. We're still hanging on. And I see the 10-year moving higher into its resistance line. So I, I think everything's still intact. Uh, we'll continue to monitor it. We'll see what happens. Uh, if we are going and entering a deflation and gold's the leader, that's why we're seeing that big sell-off. If, if gold's the leader, and everything else is going to follow, which it very well could be, then we could potentially could have a problem somewhere. But copper's not showing it yet. I'm waiting to see the signals. And we could see a sharp reversal here in gold. Very well could. Uh, but let's wait and see and see what the data tells us. Again, this is just financial education or my financial opinion. It's not supposed to be used as, as advice. Uh, and thank you guys for listening. This is fine, Finding Value.